Unexpected by Kaze Fiend, Part 1 Sometimes unexpected things happen. Frisk had gained a little weight. It caused no alarm in the beginning. They were growing accustomed to the surface life once again. Eating a lot of different things, showing Sans all the food that was unavailable in the underground. They had simply begun overeating. Frisk would start going for a jog every other day. No problem. They felt a little sick from time to time. Again, this caused no major alarm. The stress of helping humans and monsters cooperate was immense sometimes. Both parties were quite stubborn in some regards, but steps had been made towards a brighter future. They would feel better soon. The alarm bells rang in the distant corner of their mind when they were suspiciously light. Frisk silenced them. Sometimes cycles were different. Sure, they'd gotten lighter than usual, perhaps from stress again. Periods could be finicky beasts. They ignored it for a month. And another. And another. Frisk was now full-blown late. Their menstrual cycle was completely absent. The alarm they had tried so desperately to silence was now ringing full blast in their head, making them dizzy. On a sleepy Sunday, they sat alone in the bathroom, leaning against the toilet. The immediate feeling of nausea and dizziness had woken them up. Luckily, this was early enough that Sands would never be awake. Not for a few hours, at least. They had time to figure this out. Crimson eyes filled with all sorts of confusion and panic, counting days, remembering months. They had been light for three months and late for one. Frisk couldn't be pregnant. It was an absolute impossibility. Sans wasn't human. He was made of magic. They couldn't procreate. Frisk stripped themselves of their nightshirt and stared at the reflection in the full-length mirror that hung from the bathroom door. They had gotten slightly thicker. That couldn't be the beginnings of a baby bump. Not even possible. How? Of course, they didn't have a test in the house, why would they even think to keep one around? This was impossible. Would a test even work? Hopefully. The hormonal changes would hopefully be the same. More panic. They slowly set their hand over the small bump. Slender fingers traced around it. Frisk couldn't be seen going to get a pregnancy test. Most humans and monsters knew who they were knew it was impossible for a monster to get a human pregnant. The rumors of infidelity would reach Sands. Gossip would break his heart. Would Sands think that Frisk was unfaithful? Would he hate them? A tear rolled down their cheek. They had to be sure before they told him. They needed the truth to smack them in the face before they even believed it. Slowly creeping back into their room, they hunted down some clothing. The only thing open this early on a Sunday was a small 24-hour convenience store several blocks from their current abode. Donning a pair of sunglasses and their hair up in a bun, they slipped out of the house unnoticed. The store was empty, much to Frisk's relief. The only thing they had to worry about was the red-headed human cashier who leaned sleepily on the counter, lazily scrolling through her phone, a cheap-sounding pop song humming through its speakers. She didn't look like she cared too much about what was going on around her, only acknowledging Frisk with a nod and a yawn. Frisk was on a mission, hunting through the aisles of small odds and ends until they found the small section with random bits and pieces for sexual health. Condoms, pregnancy tests, feminine products, and the like. Scanning over the packages, Frisk decided on the most reliable-looking one and briskly walked to the counter. The cashier raised an eyebrow, green eyes glancing over Frisk once or twice before scanning the item. I ain't no judge. She shrugged as Frisk hastily put the money in her hand, grabbing the item and leaving before they could get their change. The girl shrugged and returned to her phone. Home was still quiet. Frisk peered into their bedroom. A sigh of relief escaped their lips and they returned to the bathroom, closing the door quietly. Two lines is yes, one is no. Waiting. The waiting would kill them. 
To pass the time, they pondered how they were going to hide the package. If this was all for nothing, they couldn't leave it out in the open, not wanting to plant even a seed of doubt in San's head. They would never be unfaithful. They loved him with all their heart and soul. No human or monster could ever pry them away, not even death itself. Enough time had passed. Frisk almost didn't want to look. What if they were just being stupid? What if there was another, more reasonable explanation for all this? They would look like a complete idiot. Feel like a complete idiot. Taking a deep breath, they picked it up. Hands shaking. Two. There were two lines. Frisk couldn't breathe. All logic and reason was gone. This didn't make sense. This was impossible. How in the world could they possibly get pregnant? What were they going to do? What would happen to them? Could, could a child even survive? They cried, quietly sobbing into a towel. Fear. They were so afraid. They had to tell Sans. They couldn't hide it. If they were, in fact, four months pregnant, they would start to show soon. Had Sans noticed the bump? Did he just not think anything of it? Frisk splashed their face with cold water. They needed to gather their resolve, their courage. They had to do this now. It was too late to go back, too late to change anything now. This was happening. They were going to have a baby. They tiptoed into the bedroom and approached their sleeping skeletal husband. Words caught in their throat as nerves held them back. Maybe they could wait until a better time, go make breakfast or go clear their head. As they turned to leave, his hand caught their wrist. Where were you, sweetheart? By the looks of it, he hadn't been awake for long, but long enough to notice Frisk had been missing for a while. Sans? Frisk bit down on their bottom lip, unsure how to proceed. A deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Now or never. They slowly knelt onto the bed beside him. Rather than using words, they took his hand and placed it over the slightly defined bump. It's yours. Part 2 It was there. This was real. Sands could feel something under his bony hand. When Frisk straightened their back, it protruded a small amount, noticeable if you really looked. It was a little firmer than the rest of their body. A slight flush of red colored his cheeks. Sands' large hands lovingly held the spot where, tucked safely in Frisk's womb, a child slept. His child. A wonderful, seemingly impossible child. Something intangible that would be part of him and part of the person he loved so dearly. Frisk sat there, eyes closed, taking deep breaths. They removed his hand from their bump and laced their fingers through his. I'm so scared, they breathed. Their voice snapped Sands out of his trance. Sweetheart, I don't understand how... Clumsily rushed words poured from his mouth. I mean, he paused, collecting his thoughts. How far? Three or four months? Frisk's voice cracked, grip on his hand tightening. Please believe me, Sands, I would never cheat on you. Frisk. Sands interrupted as he sat upright, his other hand brushing the hair out of their face. Sweetheart, I know that. I might not understand how, but I believe you. He flashed them a sweet smile. He was much calmer than Frisk had anticipated. It was almost an eerie calm. Tears now freely rolled down their cheeks, but they smiled. Oh, Sans. Frisk let go of his hand and wrapped their arms firmly around him, burying their head in his shoulder. I love you so much. I love you too. Sans' arms held Frisk tightly, hand gently rubbing their back. The morning melted into late afternoon. Frisk had napped most of the day, 
slowly fading in and out of sleep. Sands wasn't too bothered. The nausea from early that morning seemed to come back in waves throughout the day. Whoever had called it morning sickness clearly had lied to females everywhere. They hadn't spoken much about what to do next, the shock of everything still making them both a little numb, both expressing the utmost confusion with how this could have possibly happened. What was known, or assumed as all knowledge was now thrown into question, was that humans and monsters were entirely too different to be compatible. Humans were physical and were blessed with determination, while monsters were magical and their bodies were very closely tied to their soul. Sands, albeit rather crudely, had brought up that they slept together numerous times before. What had changed? What went differently? It had to have happened on one of the first nights they spent together on the surface. Frisk wasn't covered in hundreds of buttercups. They were more relaxed, calmer. The last possibility was that the human monster conception was incredibly difficult and not outright impossible as previously thought. For them, Lady Luck had rolled the dice in favor of creating a new life. The subject of going to see Alphys was brought up. No. His voice was stern with a hint of fear. She would experiment on you. The fear now more prevalent. I don't know what I would do if... The connotation of his words hung thick in the air. He laid beside Frisk, who had snuggled themselves back into bed. Sand's hand gently caressed their baby bump. The gentle motion did seem to assist with Frisk's sickness. Frisk and Sands agreed to keep the pregnancy a secret for as long as they could, at the very least until they found out more details, how far along Frisk was for certain and what exactly they were dealing with. The uncomfortable question of what the baby looked like weighed deeply on their minds. The more important question of if the child was currently healthy had to be the top concern. Frisk needed to see a doctor, a doctor that would agree to see them after hours. The following day was filled with phone calls. Many clinics outright refused. The reactions varied between skeptical of how serious Frisk was to outright refusal to even speak to them further. It was heartbreaking. Their emotions and hormones got the better of them once or twice, violently swapping between rage and sadness. The mood swings were often so fast it terrified Sands. Frisk had shouted at him once or twice for seemingly no reason. He quickly found out Frisk could be pacified with a glass of milk or bowl of cereal. Which was odd. Frisk wasn't particularly obsessed with either food before. After many hours, Frisk had finally found a clinic that agreed to see them in the night immediately. The call was filled with giggles and a strange excitement. Sands asked about it but was met with secrecy. He would have to see when they got there. Night sky sparsely dotted with stars and a cold spring wind in the air. It was a nice night. The pair decided to walk to their secret meeting. Well, Sands objected in concern for Frisk's condition, but was assured that a walk was not going to break them. Fingers laced together, Frisk back in the large coat they had worn so much before coming to the surface. Streets were mostly empty, they saw the odd car here and there and a human cyclist who gave Sands a double take, obviously still adjusting to seeing monsters walking around. Sands flashed them a toothy grin, partly to be an ass and scare them. This resulted in a playful elbow to the ribs. The clinic was its own building, possibly independently owned as opposed to being a large office building with multiple doctors. In front of the building was a peculiar sight, Frisk's face lit up while Sands managed a confused expression. A bipedal dog in a pale pink sundress and a green cardigan. She didn't look much like the dogs from Snowden. Sands didn't recognize her. Deep copper fur and floppy ears. Tail wagging so out of control that Sands figured it would break off at any moment. The dog sniffed the air and turned to look at them. An excited bark escaped her muzzle. Human! Human! Come! Come! Over here! She beckoned, one paw holding a large key ring. Doctor was running late, so he told me to let you in! She unlocked the door and ushered them inside the building. 
I'm Chiena. Please sit, sit, sit over here. Thank you, Frisk replied, and walked into the building, Sans following right behind her. It was your typical medical facility. A large front desk, various computers and printers all lined up next to neat stacks of paper. The waiting room was painted with soft pink and blue stripes, some scattered toys in a corner and a myriad of chairs. One wall completely covered with photos and cards that Sands only gave a passing glance. He was beginning to become exasperated with the high energy of the dog and sat himself down in a comfortable-looking seat. Frisk stood at the desk while Chiana rummaged through files and papers. Oh, oh, here we are. Mama human, I need you to fill out some paperwork. The volume of her voice was excessive, but Frisk didn't seem to mind. We have no records of you because, oh my gosh, it's your first time here. Thank you, Frisk smiled, grabbing a pen that was sitting on the desk and began to fill out various questions. Some were normal. Is this your first child? Do you drink or smoke? And some got oddly specific. How often are you sexually active? Frisk had to really think about it, absently counting on their fingers. They looked behind them at Sands, who had to put a palm to his face as the dog woman continued to talk. Chiana suddenly popped up beside Frisk, her loud voice now hushed to a whisper. Can, can I pet the baby? Her paw hovering closer to Frisk's baby bump. Dr. Pierce told me to ask and not to pet, but can I pet? Frisk nodded and grasped the approaching paw lightly in her hand. Of course. Placing it gently on the bump, other hand giving Chiana a delicate pat on the head. She gasped, tail once again wagging itself into a blur. You pet me? Oh my goodness, pets! Giggles and happy yelps filled the quiet office. Sorry I'm late. A tall, graying man entered the office. He lightly carried a yawning toddler in a pink onesie, setting her gently beside Sands. It was my weekend with my daughter. I had forgotten. Doctor! Chiana's large brown eyes sparkled. This is Mama Dreamer and Papa Skeleton! She excitedly pointed her paws towards them. Sands quickly rose to his feet, towering over the other man, red eyes looking him over but saying nothing. Hello, sir and madam. The doctor smiled softly and extended his hand towards Sands. I am Dr. Pierce and I am so very glad you have chosen to come see me about such a unique situation. I look forward to working with you. Sands firmly shook his hand. Yes, hey. Thank you so much for doing this. Frisk bowed their head. Your receptionist was so delightful on the phone. I felt that because she was a monster, she would be easier to talk to. Madam Dreamer, I will do everything to help you and your husband on this joyous occasion. Pierce placed both hands on Frisk's shoulders. Your situation is a miracle. We're going to start with a couple of standard procedures. If you would leave your coat with your husband and follow me for a moment, we can get started. I'm coming too, Sands protested, throwing the doctor a glare. I assure you, sir, he started. It's simple things like taking height and weight and some more questions. I'll call you when it's time to see the baby. Sands, it's okay, Frisk reassured and handed him the coat. He leaned down and gave them a quick toothy kiss before grumpily sitting back down beside the drowsy toddler. Chiana leaned over and whispered something in Pierce's ear. He chuckled and nodded. I'll take you on that bet. Sands watched as Frisk, the doctor, and the receptionist disappeared down the dark hallway into a room at the end. Sands was alone. Well, mostly. He glanced down beside him to see two expressive blue eyes and a mop of blonde curls. Hey there, kid. He smiled trying to be as not scary as he could. Cassie, the girl grinned, one of her front teeth missing. She looked to be no older than four years old. Sands, he replied, unsure what the child wanted with him. Sands, she repeated incorrectly, and jumped off the chair and stumbled her way to the pile of toys, sorting through them before choosing a stuffed cat and bringing it over to Sands. Meow, meow. Sands chuckled. 
That's a pretty nice kitty you got there, princess. Cassie smiled and began to unsuccessfully climb onto San's lap. The fact that she wasn't terrified of a giant skeleton impressed him. Sans could see how it would be easier for dog and rabbit monsters to fit in. He had frightened a small child once or twice while grocery shopping. Gently, he reached down and picked her up, setting Cassie in his lap. She tugged at his sweater and pointed to the previously ignored wall of pictures. What's this? Sans glanced over. Many pictures of human children, exhausted-looking mothers in hospital gowns, a few graduation photos. Cards expressing gratitude for safely delivering their children or helping them through medical issues. It put Sans a little more at ease. This man might know what he's doing. A white folded piece of paper pinned to the wall caught his eye. He leaned closer to make out the light cursive it was written in. Thank you for trying. For trying? The realization hit him and he nervously gripped the arm of the chair digging his fingers into the wood. Sometimes children didn't make it. The small child in his lap looked up at him curiously. Anxiety and fear hit him too hard to notice her attention. He was afraid. He had to play calm for Frisk's sake. He didn't want them to stress or worry about what he felt. He was so afraid. What if something happened to Frisk? To the child? Sans almost didn't even notice the dog receptionist scamper her way over to him. Papa, they're ready for you now. Aren't you excited? I will take the human puppy from you. The shrill sound of her overexcited voice snapped him back to reality, and he slowly handed the doctor's child over to the dog woman. Bye-bye, Sans, the girl yawned, as Sans entered the room he had seen Frisk go into. Frisk waved at him from a strange bed they were sitting up in, their midsection exposed, Doctor plucking something into the machine beside them. Sans quickly closed the gap and was at Frisk's side. Okay, we're all good to go to see what's going on in there. The doctor grabbed a small bottle of gel and squeezed a clear substance onto the bump. The cold sensation caused Frisk to shudder and grip Sans's hand. His eyes darted over angrily. Did that hurt them? No, Sans, it was just cold. Frisk's chuckle caused his expression to soften, looking at them and smiling. Neither of them noticed the doctor roll a small piece of equipment where he had poured the gel. Hey, Mom and Dad, we're going to get a picture soon. Both looked at the small screen as he hit a few keys and turned some dials. A strange black and white picture started to appear, looking like strange circles of black. More movement, a darker circle. Well, I'll be damned. I lost a bet. Dr. Pierce moved over the spot again, other hand pointing to the screen. See that? Two reasonably well-defined shapes in the mess of gray and black. It is twins. They look normal and healthy. 